If you kissed me, I said to him, I become beautiful. I swear it. He looked at me across the bar table. Hundreds of men I've told this to. Hundreds of old, young, fat, skinny, brave, hopeless men. And he was the only one to look at me and not say a thing. His eyes didn't linger on the warts at the corner of my mouth, at the sores on my cheeks and on my neck, at the dull tinning of my hair, which I tried to hide under wide-brimmed hats. What do you mean, he asked. My hair sped. I'd never gotten this far before. I scrambled through my purse for a picture of me on my 16th birthday, carried with me these seven years since. I passed him the picture. Proof that my hair had once shone like honey on toast, that my lips had once sparkled like strawberries freshly washed, without the aid of makeup. Now I had a closet full of cosmetics, and each morning I tried in vain to make my appearance less shocking. This is you, he asked. I braced myself for laughter, for horror, for embarrassment, for any reaction. But he just looked at me. Yes, I said. And this is you, he said, pointing at me across the table. Yes. And you prefer this? He held up the picture. My face burned. I snatched the picture back and put it in my purse. I started to leave. Hey, he said. I was just asking. I was just making sure I got the story straight. This is what you want. I nodded. And you think I can help you? I nodded. Okay. He leaned across the table. My heart split in two and released a new thing, a, f a flame of hope that stole all the heat from my hands and made them tingle. I knew I should close my eyes, that's what you're supposed to do, but I, I didn't do it fast enough when I saw his lips, pink and flowered, reached for the dry folds of mine. His peck made a little noise like the sound of air being released from a balloon. He sat back in his chair and looked at me. Is it working? I asked. My words were soft, almost silent, scrambling to get out of my tight throat and be heard. I don't know, he said. Maybe. I felt my face with my anxious hands, but everything was still rough, puckered, hairy. Maybe it takes a minute, he said. I sat with him for a long time, lamenting that no miracle had occurred, but while he spoke to me, I, I realized that, miraculously, he was still there. But well, I decided I'd gotten it wrong. I'd misunderstood the witch who cursed me. She hadn't said I needed to be kissed. She said I needed to fall in love. I had once believed that you couldn't have one without the other, but things change. So, we went for walks in the city, he and I. We walked in the rain and we walked in the night, the silvery street lamps stirring romance in our hearts. We held hands. We talked about dreams. We were in the park when it happened. We, we climbed a tree and um, we were in two opposite branches staring at each other. I could feel his eyes pouring into mine. He grabbed me by the coat and he gasped. I love you. I just, I just love you. <laughs> My heart opened again. It was happening at last, as a breeze stirred between us, pulling brittle leaves from the branches. The leaves brushed my shoulders and cheeks as if to give me their own expired youth. I touched my face. We had our first argument that day. <laughs> oh, I accused him of not being truthful. If he'd meant what he said, I wouldn't still be ugly. I did mean it. He said, I, I love you, and I, I mean it. You said it because you thought it would make me beautiful, I said. No, he said. He held me in his arms, and we were quiet for a very long time. I, I must have gotten it wrong. My wedding day. 
I decided the old witch must have told me it was my wedding day that would make me beautiful. I thought she said love, but I used to think you couldn't have one without the other and things changed. It meant I'd have to be patient for a few more years before he felt he could ask and then another year waiting for the day, but you know, it would be worth it. On the morning of my wedding, I paced from mirror to mirror in my snowdrop gown looking for signs of change. I thought maybe my skin looked softer or my eyes brighter, but the changes were coming fast and when I walked down the aisle, I was still pockmarked and warted and his relatives couldn't help but avert their eyes. I faced my new husband. He was handsome with expensive tailoring and love. He took my hands and kissed my dry lips and we were married. The kiss said so. The ring said so. And although I smiled a lot that day, I felt this inner sinking of my heart because I knew nothing had changed. That night I cried in his arms. The old witch lied to me, I said. It's okay, he said. He patted my stringy hair. It's not. You married me because you thought it would make me beautiful. He led me from our bed. He took me to the mirror and stood with his naked belly to my hairy back. He threaded his smooth arms through mine and rested his shapely hands on my sagging stomach. His eyes met mine in the mirror. You are beautiful, he said. I stood there a moment. Then I slid from his embrace and left the room. I spent my days combing my memories for what the witch had said. But I'd gone into her backyard and I picked her flowers. They were the ones she was growing for a competition. I didn't know that. And she caught me and she caressed me. And she said the spell could only be broken if and then, then it's just raging off us. I spent more money on fancier cosmetics, designer clothes, they made little difference. My husband would catch me staring into mirrors, eyes drooped and tired. Come on, he'd say, and he'd gently lead me away. Sometimes I'd follow, most times I didn't. Very quickly, our marriage lost its laughter. I blamed the curse. I'd sit in my room, nursing and nursing this blame until I felt it in every shriveled pore. My fault. It's my fault. My husband and I stopped talking as much and then we didn't talk at all. And one night at dinner I realized he couldn't even look at me anymore. His neck was drooped down like a dying flower. I began to cry. Fat drops landed on my fresh steak. The meat sizzled with despair. You don't love me, I said. I'll never be beautiful. Why don't you just leave? He chewed a steak. I'd overcooked it, it was tough. <laughs> he chewed for a very long time. <laughs> then he swallowed and spoke. You're right, he said. We finished our meal. He left the table silently and I remained. I stood at my hands, two tight withered fists like a pair of bad apples. I heard noises like drawers opening and shutting. I knew I should go to my husband, but I couldn't move. I just sat there loosening and tightening my hands. The hands that plucked the flowers. 